Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome back. We're um, here for our third league in this uh, boot camp we are doing. Currently we are even, so we're five wins, five losses over ten games. Um, just move my mic a bit closer. Hopefully uh, it's a bit better for you guys. Um, yeah, so so far not going terribly or amazingly. Um, as I said last video, we're going to try and pick this win rate up to 60 or above so we can show that you can at least go even um, as far as online is concerned. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, looks like our first opponent is has come along here. Uh, wish them some luck on the dice roll. And we'll keep this. So it's a pretty good looking hand. Um, at least we got a lot of totem armor. All right. We'll lead on Horizon Canopy in case it's Ponza, and we'll see uh, if if we need to fetch a basic or not. If it's Mono Red Prowess, uh, yep. So we'll fetch a basic. Alright, so here we're really hoping to draw a Daybreak card. Um, and then the rest of it's just going to be stalling until then. So, the fact they let on Burst Lightning probably means they've got Runaway Steamkin. And that does not have haste, so I'm going to get in for 3 damage while I can. And then next turn, I'm going to have a Glade Cover Scout with Hyena Umbra to block. Or maybe I'll even leave Slippery Boggle back, but I don't think that's winning us too much. Um, maybe it's just going for a Bedlam Reveler. Alright, he's got a Killin' Fiend. Killin' Fiend's not too bad to deal with. Um... It doesn't have haste though, so I think we still want to be aggressive here. Go down to 11, and then we'll take another damage off our scout, and the lightning bolt has a sort of virtual, uh, virtual 8. We could just block with the slippery boggle, um, it's going to be likely big enough to block anything uh, that they're doing. There's just killing Fiend though. Alright, so there comes the bolt to our face. Three damage. Alright, uh, we rip our Haymaker off the top of our library. That's pretty nice. And he's got a block or he's dead. Um, cool. So we still gain one off the top of our library there. Uh, really nice. And now we are on the draw. We are worried about Blood Moon. Um, and of course, Spirit Dancer is very useless, in my opinion, in this matchup. So we'll take her out. Um, bring in this. And we might just remove one Grist Spoon for a second Remokers. I think that's what I did last time I had this matchup. And we're one win, one loss in this deck so far. We'll mulligan that hand, it's got nothing going for it. We'll keep this one. Uh, it's pretty good. Keep. We'll actually bottom the Hyena Umbra here, not the Spider Umbra, because I might want the Spider Umbra for Force of Vigor. I have a feeling like we're going to be on blocking duty and waiting to draw both our land and our daybreak coronet. Did he blank on land two? No. Steamkin? Kill and Fiend. Alright, Kill and Fiend's not too bad. Alright, that's a really good draw. Um, so we'll just play out the Ethereal Armor. We'll look to block the Kill and Fiend. And then look to draw land next turn to um, Daybreak and virtually win. 
They have Blood Moon here, it's fine. Okay, they've Lava Darted. I'm just gonna skip through until we need to block. Light up the stage. So yeah, Killing Fiend's toughness won't grow here. It'll get a lot of power, but we can just block it before it does any kind of damage, and we only take four from the Swiss Spear. All right, so he's only attacked with Swiss Spear. Uh, we'll just take that for now. Come on, land, not land. All right, let's get some totem armor happening. And that way we can just trade our Spider Umbra with uh, whatever cycle spells they use on the Swift Spear. Assuming they don't attack with Killon Fiend again. On the top of our library has been kind because it gave us a daybreak, but we do need to see a land. Um... Alright, second Killon Fiend. So he might just look to set up for a big Alpha Strike next turn. Alright, he's only got two cards in hand. We do find the land. Uh, very fortunate. I will take it. It's sort of unfortunate that we don't have Trample here. Um, but we needed the Spider Umbra in case we were forced to chump block the Swiss Spear. Um, I didn't want to take another 3 4 damage and then potentially get bolted um, with how low our life total was. Alright, he's got another Killing Fiend. I think it's uh, going to be game here. Yep, cool. Uh, so get there around one. So that is two wins from three against Mono Red Prowess, so that's quite nice. And then, uh, what's our adjusted little rate here going to be? Fifty-four. Fifty-four point five four recurring, so technically fifty-five. Alright. <clears throat> okay. Again into round two on the play again. Being on the play makes a pretty significant difference um, as to win rate. All right, we haven't seen a, a fetch land or a creature in three hands, and now we're going to be forced to keep this, um, probably bottoming land in a daybreak. So keep bottom two, daybreak. Wait, no, cancel. Um, we'll bottom Misty Rainforest and Raise of Edge Thicket, and then we just need to find a land to cast our Daybreak later on. Hopefully, we can see an Ethereal Armor, uh, sorry, a Hyena Umbra for some Totem Armor protection, or hopefully it's something that does not kill our creature. Alright. So, is he naming blue or red? It's Ponza, gotcha. Well, this is awful having to go in on Dryad Arbor against Ponza because they can just cast Pillage this turn and destroy it. Um, at which point we just straight lose the game. Um, and that gets, like, even if we get above three toughness, uh, <laughs> we're still not in a very good spot from it all. Maybe they just have Blood Moon and attacking for five will be enough to beat them. Or maybe, yeah. Time is cracker, hopefully. Guessing it's not Blood Moon, it is Pillage. Well, yeah, wrecked. Um, well, we are royally boned here. Bloodbraid? or oh, Questing Beast? Sure. Uh, 
Uh, I think we have to cycle our canopy. Alright, well we get to our boggle. Um, which is fine. Now we just need to find land and not get blown out by more pillage. Or blood moon. Arbor Elf is fine. There's a Magus. Alright, we're just uh, pretty dead here unless we were like double planes in a row or two planes in the next three turns. Alright, I'm gonna concede. There's very, very little chance we're getting out of that. Top of our library is not helping us at all. Alright. So they do have some number of Blood Moon, and then the rest of it is Magus of the Moon. So, Magus, uh, Dromoka's command can obviously answer both. Force of Vigor can only answer Blood Moon. Um, do I want something like Gadok Teague? Probably not. Like, it's only really getting Chandra right. Um, Suppression Field. Suppression Field gets Arbor Elf. Probably. I'll probably just remove two Griff's Burn. I think I want protection against their Blood Moon effects more than I want to um, blow out their Arbor Elf with the Suppression Field. It seems kind of narrow. Alright, we'll keep this. We need to draw land and not get completely ruined by our opponent pillaging us or blood mooning us. So keep, bottom. Uh, if we draw a single land, at least we can get a 5-5, five five, but it's only a 5-1 five five, five trample, sorry. Um, which is really not very good. Alright, uh, the good news is... I think we can attack here. It sort of slows our opponents down as much as it slows us down trading here. Uh, although we did miss a land drop. Yep, so he's gone for the trade. It means he won't be doing a blood moon or anything this turn. So we get our rank all back. Uh, so it's a one for one. We deal two damage, but we lose one mana. Uh, not amazing. Alright, we blank two land draws in a row. Um, we're okay against Blood Moon, but against, you know, pretty much anything else, we're really not in very good shape. Uh, we'll see what he fetches here. Oh, fuck, he's got Blood Moon. Hopefully it's Magus of the Moon and not Blood Moon. Chandra, Chandra's fine. Double red pillage. Questing base. Okay. Alright, top of the label, uh, library, don't forsake me. Please don't forsake me. Alright, cool. So we find a card. And we still can't, um, we still can't go and attack here, or else uh, he just trades his questing beast with it. So we need to dodge Blood Moon, cast Daybreak Coronet, and then start attacking. And hope he doesn't have Nature's Claim or Force of Vigor. Another useful uh, advantage to Promoker's Command is we can get rid of this thing. Mm. 
So it looks like our opponent's just flooding out on his own land. Um, does destroying this do anything? If he had um, Bloodbraid Elf, he would have played it pre-combat. So it would only be for Magus of the Moon, or which he can cast anyway, or Blood Moon and Pillage, which he can cast anyway. So I'll just let this happen. Yeah, so it's a pillage. Season Pyromance is fine. Alright, now in his end step, this is Devotion. His Devotion to Red's currently 10. <sighs> or Red and Green, pardon me. Um... So this will be able to block our creature and trade with it, so we just need to pass back here. Um, if we did a Force of Vigor in his end step, we could only remove one, and it would have been at nine, uh, and he only needs seven, um, so that would have done nothing. So we'll just play a little bit patiently here, as opposed to suiciding. Really good synergy between Chandra and uh, this god here. <clears throat> Gets a lot of damage at our face. Forest, so he'll choose not to play that. He'll deal two damage to us. Uh oh, what's he tapping for? Glory Bringer is a bit irritating. Because uh, now he just kills us. Um, I guess maybe he might not choose to exert it, but we are super dead. Yes, upkeep, blow up, Utopia Sprawl, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it gets us any closer to winning as opposed to playing Ethereal Armor, attacking, getting first strike damage on anything that isn't this god. Then the god stops being a creature. I don't know what he's tanking about, because he's just got the win. <clears throat> All right. Looks like he lets us go to two, which is weird because if he exerts us, exerts it, we're just dead. Um, unless he's got lightning bolt, uh, I don't really understand that line. All right, might as well play both auras out. Gain an extra one life from the Sentinel's eyes. Uh, just attacking him here. Uh, we'll just ignore the Chandra and the Chandra emblem. We should hopefully have enough uh, damage. That way we have him on a two turn clock. And he's got a block here. Oh, he doesn't have to block, but I mean he does. At worst he just blocks with his god and nothing else. Yeah. Alright, at this stage, I think on his upkeep, maybe we'll go a little bit of mana denial. It might be too little too late, but we'll try. Uh, can't. Uh, destroy the indestructible god, but we'll target it anyway, right? Get our extra target. This guy's not an enchantment, is he? That would be awkward. No, he's not. So hopefully we've just denied him enough of mana. Do -do. Don't care about that life gain. Chandra Emblem, potential to play 2 cards in the for 10. Should still have more. Why is he shocking? Okay, so you've got 
Arbor Elf plus Bloodbraid Elf. I mean, that would suck if it was Bloodbraid Elf, because that would just be lethal off of what Bloodbraid finds. Oh, well, uh, we couldn't... We could have attacked Chandra and stopped the ultimate. Maybe that was a bit of a mistake. Mm. Yeah, I guess we needed to attack Chandra there, um, because he had three spells through... Two cards because Blood Braid Elf is Blood Braid Elf. Alright. Um, you know, I did have the option to not lose there and I did choose the wrong option. So. It's my fault. Um. Look to play uh, tighter this game. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe dealing 10 damage is the same as not dealing anything. Um, I don't know. I guess the fact Chandra was ultimate thing um, should have been enough of a sign for me to go for the attack there. Uh, we were just dead the turn before if he exerted Glory Bringer. I'm not sure why he didn't. Um, yeah. Yes. Alright, so we'll go to round three. But yeah, that was, um, that was also on, like, missing two land drops, I think. Mulder 6 missed two land drops or missed three land drops. Um, We'll keep this. This is really good. So, yeah. We are on the play as well. Um, third third uh, league match in a row. Opponent reciprocated our good luck. Um, yeah, it seems like a lot, pe a lot of people are like way friendlier when you just take the initiative. Um, if you don't, everyone seems to sit there quiet. Probably, you know, 14 out of 15 matches, your opponent won't write anything to you. Um, and you won't write anything back, and yeah, etc, etc. Alright, uh, is this Death Shadow? Okay, it's Mill. So it could be Vengevine. Uh, let's let's get out um, our Trample and our Ethereal Armor attack. Attack for five. Obviously, his crab is not a blocker. So yeah, it could just be blue-black mill where they're trying to mill us, or it could be Vengevine where they mill themselves and attack for a million. Um, we'll see with their land drop and where they target the uh, effect. Yeah, so it's it's Vengevine. All right, we got some rest in peace, which is really, really good here. Um, really, really good. There's the creeping chill. It's got that as well. Okay. Glimpse. Wow, he's got a couple of narco movers. And another creeping chill. Um, so he gets the narco movers out, he gets the prized amalgams out, and then he can cast Gravecrawler next turn and he doesn't currently have Vengevine. So we're in pretty okay shape here. We play Daybreak, we attack for 9. Unless we draw land, in which case, yeah, it's more than that. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, one of the lower rolls that I've versed, as opposed to, you know, like 20, uh, all 4 Venge Vines by turn 2 or 3, and you just sit there scratching your head going, yeah, that's nothing I can do about that, but yeah. Here we are, he's, he's creeping shield to gain uh, 6 life already and we're attacking him for 5 and then 9, so we've done 14 damage to our opponent. Pretty, pretty god hand. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty easy to play hand as well. 
So he's got one Vengevine in his graveyard now. He can cast a Grave Crawler. I think it's the second creature cast. And then it comes out. Yeah, so second creature spell will cause Vengevine to come out. So unless he's got land creature, a land grave crawler, I'm not sure why he bought out grave crawler just now. If he could have set up for next turn. Um, okay, well we'll just continue to make our guy bigger. It's the same power and toughness if we add Daybreak or Hyena and um, Spider. And we've got enough first strike damage that we don't need to worry about our toughness here. Three, six, uh, seven, eight. So he's got ten toughness um, and eight power. So, yeah. yeah. So put him to two. He's gonna try to go off here, uh, which is fine. And yeah. And then I think we are just good. Alright, so post board, we want these. Rest in peace. And suppression field's probably quite good too, um, because it will destroy, uh, stop his fetches, which he's got a lot of to trigger the Hedron Crabs. And it will stop him recasting uh, Grave Crawler. Mm. I don't know what I care about more. Uh, I thought we could go for like protection on ourselves with these ley lines, but then we're diluting our deck if we do that. Like, because he could run Thought Seize. But I think we'll let that get us if he's got it. We'll take out one Grist Spoon, bring in two Suppression Fields. And then we've got five Hate Cards here. Um, great lightning. I feel like I've versed this guy before. Hmm. Well, we haven't got a creature, but we have got a very strong graveyard piece. Uh, he's begun with seven. Um, it's probably not good enough still. Alright, this is better. So we'll keep this. We'll bottom Hyena Umbra. Uh, the evasiveness will be a little more important than the totem armor, I'm pretty sure. As long as we don't get thought seized here, we're pretty good shape. Ah, oh, here comes the thought seized. Yeah, there it is. Alright. I'm not sure how many sources he runs, but I'm sure it's not a million. Uh, I don't think he's got the full eight discard spells or even the full six. I don't think it's a main deck card, I think it's a sideboard card. Against yeah, combo decks and we're kind of a combo deck. We sort of just ignore what our opponent's doing and smack them in the face. Um Yeah, so I was having a thought um, about why we used to run so many uh, Path to Exiles and in the main deck and uh there's a very good answer to that. It was uh, Splinter Twin. Um, and of course, Splinter Twin isn't in the metagame anymore, so we can get a much greedier or a dense build uh, and not really get punished against too much of the field. Um, yeah, so opponent turn two has got uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, so we need to draw a creature, go creature, ethereal armor. Okay, just. Um, we're super dead here. Super, super dead. Maybe on the, um, maybe on the draw, it's correct to leave in like three ley lines and then take out a core spirit dancer, a griff spoon, and. Not, not, um, not bring in three suppression fields. And we take out one of them. Yeah. So it'd be one, one ley line out plus, yeah, okay, we're done. 
one ley line out plus uh, one core, one grist burn, and then we, yeah, don't have suppression field. All right, so maybe suppression fields, like I'm sure it's better on the play than the draw, but we saw the discard, so we're gonna want three of these, I'm pretty sure. We'll remove a core. The cores are a very good way to win. Maybe we just remove two Griff Spoon. Alright, let's go that. Alright. Yeah, well, I'm not mulliganing this. <laughs> draw a second land in our first two turns and instantly win the game. Oh, sorry. Well, we can't draw a land in our first turn, but we've got um, a 3 3 scout. The potential to just rest in peace, blow out our opponent. And yeah, ley line protection from discard, so yeah, I'm perfectly happy with this. He's started on grave crawler, which is fine. We draw the land uh, and you know jam. This can't block, so we can attack into it for one. So yeah, even if our opponent spends a turn casting Assassin Trophy here, he can't do anything else. And then we can just run out a second Rest in Peace and Ethereal Armor and attack for a bunch. Alright, he's gone Crab, so that's just alright. I guess he's going to play another small creature, maybe Stitch's Supplier. Yep. Alright, so let's go Ethereal Armor, and then we'll go Spider Umbra, and attack for six. And we've got a much faster clock than our opponent. He can just put down creatures and go a little wide, so if he keeps putting up chump blockers, okay, he took the damage. I think that's maybe a little loose. Um, playing the Spider Umbra there is better than playing the Hyena Umbra because if we draw another Green Aura, we won't be able to cast both Green Auras in the same turn, by the way. Um, Alright, so he's attacking again. Take three. I'm not sure why he's still milling himself. Surely he starts milling me at this point. Um. Alright, so we'll cast this Hyena Umbra, make it so he has to block with Hetron Crab. Carrion Feeder can't block. He might just sacrifice the Hedron Crab to Carrion Feeder um, before damage. <clears throat> yep. Alright, so no need to shock this second rest in peace in here. Um, if he cracks and does an abrupt decay on our rest in peace, like whoop de doo, he's got no graveyard and he'll have two cards in hand, then he'll draw the third. Um, so yeah, he's just. Fetched in a tapped water grave. Hardcast prize amalgam, that's fine. This thing can block though, which is irritating. I'm sure he'll attack for all four. Okay, he plans to block with Stitches Supplier instead of prize amalgam. Alright, so we'll see what we draw, and we might have to be careful about deciding whether or not to attack here. Um, I think this is where we stop attacking and we start delaying, because, uh, yeah, we can't really stand to take 8 on crack back, that's lethal, right? So, 
So yeah, we've blanked on aura draws pretty hard here. <laughs> Drawn two land and... And one aura, I think. No, two land, one aura, one rest in peace. Actually, no, it's three land, right? Because we only had a one lander. Yeah. Hardcast creeping chip. I think that's game. Um, so no matter how we block, we're pretty boned here. If we block the prize amalgam, he'll sack it to the carrion feeder. If we block the carrion feeder, it's just five the other way. Um, so yeah, we're like super, super screwed. Um, yeah. Uh, we lose. I guess that's a form of rage. All right, we're drawing more land. Uh, the top of our deck did not like us that game at all, at all. And yeah, that's that's not dredge I'd normally consider a dredge, but it's really a form of dredge, right? Although I guess I should count that form of blue tron then, maybe. All right. Um. I consider that more dredge than what I consider the Tron Tron though. I don't know. That was more like Eldrazi Tron, but not Eldrazi Tron. It was weird. So down to a 46. It's not going great. <sighs> Haven't really had a good run here. Okay, so back for round four here. All right, uh, we can't keep this. Uh, we'll get rid of that. I love how it's still making those terrible bloody noises. Oh my god. Uh, opponent reciprocated our good luck message. So yeah, if you want to make the online community better, just start writing, you know, good luck, have fun. Or just high good luck, because one time I wrote good luck have fun to my opponent, then he found out I was playing Boggles, and then he was like, how can anyone have fun against that deck? And I was like, well, you can be salty if you want. Um, so here I'm going to assume it's Ponza. I'm going to at least get a basic forest before we get mages to the moon. Um, it's really irritating that they're running that instead of Blood Moon, to be honest. Um, for us. Uh, what on earth is this? Trample, as long as you turn, it's your turn, he has Hexproof, right? Okay. Alright. That's fine. Uh, let's just get our Ethereal Armor and our Rancor. And attack for significant what he did to us. Um, yeah. Seems pretty good to me. Next turn we have nine, unless we draw something. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm not so sure it's Ponza. Could be. They're running Utopia Sprawls in any, in any case. Um, Alright, so bring this in tapped. We'll go Spider Umbra. And we'll go Hyena Umbra. As I said, we can attack for 9. Might not be good enough. Uh, he can level this up to, I'm pretty sure, just a 4 4. So we'd be taking 4, 5, uh, 8, 9 in return. Okay, we can attack. You could also have like a lightning bolt or something, but yeah. I, I can't see him getting his hex drink at level 8 uh, this turn. And even then, if he did that, it would probably be by utilizing his dried uh, his arbor elves. Alright, so he got it to level 6. Okay, so he's got it to level 8 with both of them. And then he can attack for a max of 9. So he'll probably attack for not... Mm. 
Not sure I agree with that. Alright, well let's cycle this horizon canopy. Uh, well we still attack and uh, kill him. <laughs> To trample damage. Alright, so not not quite the player opponent was looking for, I don't think. Um, suppression field's gonna be better here than what it was against our last opponent. And our last Ponder opponent that is. Um Maybe something like that. Um, we just lose hearts and maggots to the moon, so we'll um, keep as many rest in peace in as possible for him. Alright, uh, we'll keep this. Kinda weak to Blood Moon, but whatever. <laughs> Can't have it all, unless we draw it off the top of our library, uh, which we didn't. We did. Daybreak's a great card, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm not upset to see that. All right, Utopia Sprawl for Red. Don't do it, opponent. Yeah, there's the Magus. Well, we just, yeah, pretty hard lose here. Yeah. Uh, we can't draw forces now, so we need to draw, like, basic lands, <laughs> uh, which is pretty low. I guess, yeah. We've got two planes, and planes would be the. Uh, now we're just dead. Well, that doesn't really do anything. Um, we just concede, like, even if we draw planes, he's just going to exert the glory bringer and kill him. Um, maybe Force of Vigor is just a waste of time then. And... That. I bring in the third suppression field. Really try, because, like, he can't untap with Arbor Elf. It would cost him two mana to do the untap on Arbor Elf. Yeah, we'll keep this pretty light on what we want, though. Like, one aura. Yikes. Mm. For opponent either casts... If our opponent casts Arbor Elf here and then Utopia spells next turn, we can two for one them. Which is pretty good. All right, let's let's go for the old two for one, shall we? that resolve and we just have to fight <laughs> so one one counter on a creature fight fight and then we can look to reload next turn if we just cast rancor and hyena umbra we'd very likely be locked out of the game after that point all right let's assume that's his only um Only uh, Blood Moon effect and run out core. I can't see us winning with like Boggle Spider Umbra into a Blood Moon anyway. So Gloria Bringer, I don't. Th okay, Blood Raid's fine. Lightning Bolt comes in. That is some grade A bullshit. Oh my god. 
All right, we'll go for the same line. Hopefully we don't get glory bring it. That one sucks. What a joke. If we do get to untap, playing out, you know, potentially three auras here is very good. All right, he's out of gas. Excellent, excellent. All right, this is where we take over. Yeah, let's up that guy, I don't care. All right. Hey, Umbra. Let's see what we draw. Rancor. Alright, we draw a land which doesn't hurt us, which is nice. Alright, let's leave our chump blockers next turn we can play two auras and attack in the air for the kill. on your opponent. Okay. Bam. Bam. And... Cool. Get there. Cool. Alright, so got there against Ponza. So that's also one win, one loss against Ponza. Seems like we're pretty good at going even at the moment. Pretty good at going even. Alright, we're on the play. Step number one. Oh, bug. Um, Mulligan. We'll keep this. And... I think I'll bottom the... Rancor, just in case our first core dives to a removal spell. Is that another Ponza deck? Is Ponza back on the map now? Ponza would be doing something. Lightning Bolt. So hopefully he attempts to do something this turn. He does not. Uh, I think we go for it anyway. He's not guaranteed to have the second removal spell. No point living in fear. Alright, he's got it. Rough, 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 rough. Oh, it resolved. Gotcha. That's Blood Moon. Gotcha. Oh well, at least no creatures there. Um, well, we're currently running the winning the race. Uh, so attack. <laughs> Although we can block anything he does. <laughs> no, I think we still have to attack at this stage, right? No. If we attack, how many turns does it take to kill him? So it'd be eighteen. Uh, so. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, so 5, 6 turns. That's not really that quick. So third Ponza deck in the same league. Did it win a tournament or something? This stupid card. What's this flavor text? 
tidal forces of blood moon wrench and buckle the land, drawing monoliths of stone and soil towards the flaming orb. Not sure what that means, but it sounds kind of cool. Uh, I think I'm just gonna hold out sort of stool and hope to draw one of my three basic lands, at which point we can probably just win. This opponent only got like Magus of the Moon. Uh, maybe he missed a land drop. Alright, let's get some sort of aggressiveness then. <sighs> We're dealing, you know, what well, damage than what he is. Okay, there's his land drop. Yeah, there's a blood braid. Beautiful. Oh, well, doesn't really matter what he destroys here. Um, sure, we're taking care of him. He's decided it doesn't matter what he destroys. Now we're losing the ice, so, you know, attacking seems awful. Maybe we should have done it the other way around. Uh, attacked and then held up blocks, but... Questing beast? Sure, why not? So that's got death touch, and we can't block it. And it's got vigilance. Okay, we are so dead. This is so dumb. Why did they make this card a thing? It's so dumb. You just lock people out of magic, full stop. You never play another card. Alright, we need to draw exactly land this turn. Some sort of first strike. Alright, uh, well, this card is done. I'll leave it at that. I will leave it at that. Seems to almost be a mirror copy of what the first opponent was running deck wise. So. Sorry, the second opponent with the questing base, so I'm assuming, and the um, hex drinker. So. We'll uh, just drop down the suppression field in the side as a light, light. Alright, we'll keep this. I think. <laughs> it's not very good. Oh, man. Alright, well, this, this is better. Um... Marginally better, uh, so we'll keep it. I value the plains higher than I value the forest. <clears throat> and I say that and watch me draw like all forest cards. <laughs> Um, let's stop his Arbor Elf from doing anything by casting a Suppression Field. And then if we rip exactly land off the top of our library, um, like, because we get both a Suppression Field and a Sentinel's Eyes that way, or, like, we're getting Sentinel's Eyes Spider Umbra regardless, but his next turn will just be blown out by not being able to activate this and only being on two mana. Like, it's pretty bad for his deck. And hopefully, hopefully he's just got a fetch land and uh, he gets uber punished here. Hopefully his best play is play a fetch land and does nothing. <laughs> Hello? Do you have dishes in your car or something? Uh, I do not, no. Okie dokie. So he's realizing he can't activate it without paying two mana. So there's a noble hierarch. There's a fetch land. Cool. <laughs> that set our opponent reasonably far behind. He could play a non fetch land and then play Blood Moon. I 
think I want core out. I think. No, because just these these cards plus um daybreak anyway, right? And that way we can attack for three. Alright, opponent in the think tank. But you know, you play a really powerful card against a deck and it makes it very awkward. I don't think I was thinking that Hardy ends Blood Moon though. Um, but you know, a card that just shuts me out completely. What thinking is there to be done? Do -do -do. Yep, so um... As, as my friend Alan pointed out, we're giving our opponent the suppression session. Because, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's a strong card. It's a very strong card. In that in that league as well, um, I brought in Torpor Orb against... Uh, what was it? It was a green deck. It was something like Titan Shift, and I think... But yeah, there was. Was it? I can't remember what it was, but we had we had a bit of a discussion about um, what uh, what what it was good for, and we decided it wasn't really good for a lot. But it's they did have a sideboard cards of Rex Age and potentially Thrag Tusk, so it wasn't completely dead. It just wasn't great. Uh, looks like our opponent's just sort of raging a bit here. I might just pause until there's action. Okay, looks like we got uh, priority back. <clears throat> and yeah. So he's going to look to end step, fetch land, paying two mana. And we're going to have a 6 6 uh, first strike right vigilance. Reach. Alright, so we get there. Um, cool. Um, Alright, well, Suppression Field was kind of very good there, so let's bring it in another copy and then maybe minus a core. Uh, we'll just get rid of this hand completely. Oh, it's awful. And where we can actually get to our basic lands would be really nice. Um, one with creatures would be better. Oh, God damn it. All right, we'll bottom these cores. And we've got a very weak aura base and weak interaction, but what else can we do? Not a whole lot. Like mulligan into four and hoping for something better? Probably not going to happen. Alright, hopefully it's seasoned pyromancer or pillage that our opponent is doing. Village. Anger. Alright. Now let's get the suppression session happening again. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, he's, he's pausing a little bit on the cast of that card. <laughs> Do, do, do. Okay. All right. I'll get there. <laughs> and 
it was all our opponent had going for them. Anger of the Gods. Let's get our Totem Armor out. Um, he's got a second Anger of the Gods. At least we've got protection against it. If he's got a third, we'll hold up Dramoka's command as protection. God, do... People, um... Do people keep, like, literally nothing hands and hope they'll get there? Like... I've got one hate card and nothing. <laughs> like, even if you draw a fetch land, you're playing it there, right? Maybe he's got like four blood braid elves and he's just drawing glory bringers. Who knows? I mean, that's not a terrible hand. Two lands, Utopius rule, and anger plus blood braids, but. There's a hex breaker. Well, this is gonna cost three to activate. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, opponent. That's an activated ability. <laughs> All right, let's make our opponent sack an enchantment and fight our creatures. That should hopefully be game. Stripping away their creature and a mana source. We still only attack, but alright. Conan is on the grind. He does not want to lose this one. turn we can fetch uh, for a basic forest or I guess we can do it in response to a blood moon or something we don't want to do it um, at the start and we don't want to just yield to end step because he could go for pillage on misty rainforest all right opponent has lost connection cool. um, yeah so that brings us back up positive. That's eight wins, uh, seven losses, and eight on 15 gives us a 53%. Uh, so we got a fair bit of work to do get, to get that back up to 60. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was modern. That was our third modern league. Um, and yeah, three Ponza decks. Um, <laughs> With, with Suppression Field and Dramoka's Command doing a lot of work there. Um, so yeah, currently against uh, Ponza, you want Suppression Field and Dramoka's Command. Um, Force of Vigor is not good enough because they're just running Magus of the Moon. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please let me know down below if you enjoyed it um, or not. And yeah, we'll see you for the next league.